my crazy garden. We lost this big spruce tree two years ago. It was a favorite tree. It was towering and when we did we decided to make it into a garden and it's like this octagon shape. All veggies um, with a couple flowers here and there and some weeds because they're beautiful and we just control them but we let them have their space too. I've got morning glories growing everywhere and peas and beans and an artichoke and tomatoes and zucchinis and cucumbers and lettuce and dill and basil and tomatoes and Swiss chard and um, Brussels sprouts and all sorts of things and we have green beans and we have peas and today for our lesson we are going to paint some pea pods because they're so lovely and they teach us a lot about negative space and about mixing beautiful greens. And I just want to highlight our tree trunk in the middle that we left. We have some succulents growing there. And then my husband is a writer, so we hung an old typewriter and then a picture frame for the artist in the family. <laughs> so anyways, this is our crazy garden. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go inside now and begin. Welcome. Hello, we are back inside in my kitchen, my kitchen table, and we're going to paint some green, um, some peas, green peas in the pod, and I have one that I picked in my garden, um, just for color matching, and we're going to paint it in two ways, we're going to paint it closed and also open, side by side. Um, it's a simple thing to draw and a wonderful thing to paint. And so I'll go over my materials first. I have my beautiful, beautiful Wild Thorn Artist for Everyone palette. It has all the colors we need. If you don't have this palette, feel free to look at the description box below and I do give substitutions for all of these paints. So you can try that. Um, I also have a little white mixing dish. So any kind of white ceramic plate would be fine. I have my Strathmore watercolor postcards. Um, any cold press watercolor paper, even hot press would be fine. Um, you can just cut it down to a 4 by 6 size. I really love these because they're convenient. And the paper is really nice. And then I have my triple zero squirrel mop. Any pointed round watercolor brush would be fine in like a size 6 or 8 with a nice point on it. I have a watercolor um, graphite pencil. You can use any pencil or watercolor pencil in like a gray or even a green or a golden color um, to do our drawing. And then I have my pea pod. <laughs> so and I have a roll of paper towels and a glass of water. And we're gonna start with our drawing and we're gonna keep it very simple. So we're gonna start um, sort of up here toward the top and I'm just gonna draw this long rectangle with points at either end. like that. So it's just, it's a typical pea pod shape. So you can see it here. Okay. And then I'm going to do another one right next to it, pretending like I opened the pea pod. And <clears throat> basically, we, it doesn't have to be the same as this one, but I'm going to start with a point again and just sort of come down and come to another point. And then I'm going to make it a little bit wider ending up at a point. And then I'm going to start at the top and draw a line down. And then bring it up again to here. So it's sort of the same shape but inside, if you can see that. Okay? And then I'm going to draw some peas, and I'm just going to draw circles that fill up this space and just sort of march them down. These are nice, big, imaginary peas. Okay? 
That is all we do for our drawing. So even if yours don't look exactly like this, it will look like P enough, okay, if you do this sort of long rectangle shape with another shape inside and then these P's marching down in a row, these circles. Okay, so once that's done, I am going to take a kneaded eraser and I'm just going to lightly go over my drawing and just make sure I don't have too much of the watercolor pencil um, or pencil drawing on my paper. And then once that's done, I just brush it off. You can, if it's a watercolor pencil, it's not going to matter as much if the lines are dark, but I like to lift some of it off. Okay? Now I'm going to move this aside for a second because we're going to mix up some greens. And we're going to mix three greens. And we're going to start with the Viridian, which is in our Artist for Everyone palette. Um, any type of Viridian green would be fine, sap green, um, any kind of green watercolor that you have. If you don't have green watercolor, you can always mix some using ultramarine blue and some kind of golden yellow, and that will be fine too. So I'm make, making a nice reservoir of it with plenty of water. I want it to be sort of transparent. And the Wildthorn Viridian is a very rich pigment, so you can add tons and tons of water to it, um, and it's still rich. So once I have that, I've got a little cat hair in there, I'm going to pick up some of my mimosa. Any kind of cool yellow, cool clear yellow would be fine. And just get plenty of it on my brush and then mix it into the green so I get more of a yellow green. And I'm going to take one more swoop through my mimosa and give it plenty of yellow. So now I have a yellow green. Then I'm going to mix a cooler green, so I'll start with Viridian again. And then add plenty of water, okay? And then I'm going to use some of my blue Premier, so any kind of blue would be fine, like cobalt or ultramarine. And I'm going to mix some blue in there just to cool it up a little bit. So now I sort of have this blue green. And now I'm going to make a dark green. And so I'm going to start again with the Viridian. I'm going to put it here in the middle. And I won't add as much water to this one. And I'm going to use the opposite of green, which is red. And so for our set, that would be Cien Brulee, which is a reddish orange, browny earth tone. So burnt sienna. And if I add a little bit of that to my green, I get a very dark green. It's a little too much, so I'm going to put a little bit more green. And then to warm it, to cool it off just a little bit, a touch of the blue Premier. So now I have this really deep, rich green, a little more Viridian. Perfect. So I have three greens that I've mixed, a yellow green, a cool blue green, and then a darker kind of foresty green. All right? Okay, I can move my paint back over here. And now we're going to put the first layer on our pea pods. And this is fairly simple, but all we're going to do is fill in the, pea, the main pea pod here with the yellow green. We're just going to take some on our brush and then carefully paint the whole thing with this green. So I like to put a swipe down the middle to give myself a nice reservoir. And then I take a little bit more care and I work the tip of my brush up to the edges, sort of incorporating that watercolor pencil, just going right up to it so it sort of melts into the paint. If there's any leftover, we can always use an eraser later. And just being mindful of my edges, using the tip of my brush. I turn my paper so I get a good angle, and I'm using the tip of my brush. I'm holding my brush toward the tip so I have a lot of control, and I'm bringing that paint down all across both sides. And what's beautiful about these paints is they sort of start to separate, and you get all sorts of variations of yellow-green just with those two colors. So while it is still 
cut, I'm going to pick up some of the blue-green that I mixed, and I'm going to drop it in from the tip of my brush towards the top, along one side, just sort of drop it in randomly. I'm just skirting my brush really lightly along this wet paint, and pulling it all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm putting a little tiny bit on the right side too. Okay, rinse my brush and dry it off. And I'm not going to touch what's happening in here so much, but I am going to use the tip of my brush to make sure that my edges are really nice. Just sort of run the tip of my brush along the edges of my paint. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. Actually, I lied. I'm going to take a wet brush with just water on it. I'm just going to touch it here and there down the center just to sort of make that paint spread a little bit more. So now we're going to do basically the same thing on this side. And because I'm left-handed and I don't want to drag my hand over this wet paint, I'm going to turn my card around and then I'm going to start with the same yellow green and I'm going to paint the entire thing right over the pencil lines that we drew. So we're putting this base layer on of this yellow green. Pulling it all the way down, and I'm always thinking about turning my paper when I need to. Okay, so I'll be careful over here. I just, I get a better angle if I turn my paper. All the way to the tip, all the way on the other side, right up to our pencil line. You can see that some of the pencil line is starting to dissolve into the painting, but I can still see those marks that I made for the peas. And while it's still wet, I'm going to rinse my brush, dry it off, take some of that cool green, drop a little bit, just like I did on the other one, a little bit at the top, here and there around the edge, just a little bit to give it some variation. Tiny bit down this side. Okay. Then I'm going to rinse my brush again, dry it off, pay attention to my edges, make sure I can just take a clean, damp brush and run it along the edges to make sure that I have a nice edge. And then I'm going to clean my brush and dry it off really, really well. So I'm rolling it on my paper towel to a point so all the water gets soaked out of it. And I'm going to lift some paint. So we're going to turn our painting this way. And at the top left side of each of the P shapes, I'm going to stick the tip of my brush in and lift out paint. Dry it off, stick the tip of my brush in, top left side and lift out some paint. If you get out of lines, it's fine because we're going to go around that with darker paint. Top left side, swipe it through, lift out some paint. Keep drawing my brush off and keep moving down so I get every P. And what this does is it sort of gives us a highlight because those P's are shiny and we want them to look shiny. Now, I don't want to touch this anymore until it's completely dry. This is our first layer. So already we have these P-shapes with these beautiful variations of greens. And we've lifted the highlights out of the P's. Okay? So we're going to let this dry completely and then we will come back for the next step. Okay, so our P's are now dry. And before we move on, I am going to take an eraser. This is just a white plastic eraser. You could also use a kneaded eraser. And I'm going to very carefully just kind of go around the edges if I have any 
pencil lines that I want to erase. You may not have any, so you could skip this step, but I saw a little bit that I wanted to erase. Okay, now, now we're going to give our peas a little bit more shape. So I'm gonna start with the, the cool green, get some paint on my brush, and then sort of dry it off a little bit so there's not too much. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the cool green up here toward the top, and a little bit down the left side of this pea pod, and then a little bit down here at the bottom, and then also along the right side. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and dry it off and I'm gonna soften those edges. Just take my clean, damp brush and just sort of go along the marks that I made to soften them. And that just gives a little bit more definition to the edge of our pea. Okay, pea pod, I should say. Just softening it in here and there. Okay, and now we're gonna move over to this one. And I am gonna turn my card around so I can work more freely. If you're right-handed, you'll be doing the opposite, okay? It's always good to turn our paper. So we're gonna start again with the cool green. Same thing, a little bit at the top. A little bit down the sides. and toward the points, and then down the other side. Rinse our brush, dry it off, and soften. So we're using the clean, damp brush to sort of soften what we just put down. And what softening does is it just, it just makes it so there aren't any harsh lines. We get that depth of color, but without any harsh lines. There. All right, now we're gonna go back to the cool green. And this time, we're gonna take our time and we're gonna go around each pea inside the pod. So we're going to start where the opening is and we're putting this cool green down and we're moving around the edge of the pea. So not too much paint on the brush like I had. <laughs> just sort of fill it in. And you see how I'm just, I'm moving down each section and I'm going around the peas. So I'm isolating them with this darker green color. And turn your card if you need to. I have a light shining here so you guys can see better, but it, unfortunately it creates a big glare. Grab more paint if you need it. And just turn your card as you need to. So what I'm doing is I'm filling in that opening and I'm moving around the peas. So I'm, I'm sort of in, enclosing the peas inside because when you open it, you see these shiny peas coming out, but around them it's dark. So we're adding that dark element. Okay. So once that's done, I'm gonna grab some of that darker green. And while it's still wet, I'm just gonna touch in the darker green along the edges 
where the peas meet one another in between these circle shapes. Just adding in some of this darker green. And especially at either end where it kind of comes to a point. And then down the other side. I'm using the tip of my brush. Rinse my brush, dry it off and roll it to a point. And then I'm going to soften everywhere that I that I see an edge. Going around those peas. Okay, so do you see how? So now those circles that we drew in the center are shining. Okay, you can really see them. So we've gone around with the darker green. Now we're going to go back to the first pea pod, turn my paper around, and at the very edge, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of that green and a tiny bit down here. Rinse my brush, dry it off, and I'm always going to soften. So I just want a little bit of that dark green, but then I soften it about a bit. So you see how that gives it dimension, okay, by having these different values of greens and different temperatures of greens. The warms will come forward and the cools will go back, so it gives us a sense of roundness. Okay, I'm going to go back to this darker green and do the same on this pea. Just put a little bit toward the ends. Rinse my brush, dry it off, and then soften. So those greens blend together really well. Now, I'm going to go into my paint box and take some of the ochre leger. So yellow ochre would be fine too. Put a little bit of that in my dish and then just a tiny touch of the raw umber just to make it a little bit darker. And then at the end, I'm going to put bring out just a little bit of this color from the very tips. You know how peas have that little bit at the end. Also on this one, turn this one around. There. Okay. Now I notice that I got a little bit out of the lines on my peas. So what I can do is I can take a clean damp brush, the very, very tip of it, all right? And I can just rub it back and forth and get rid of some of the areas where I went over the line into the pea, where I want it to be lighter. And it's just lifting that green paint right up. And it's just making them a little bit more round. I can always take a piece of tissue and just dab up any extra if I need to. Here, I see some down here, too. There. So really, for all purposes, they could be done now, but I like to take it a little bit further and give it a little bit more contrast. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to take more of that dark green, and I'm going to choose the, since my highlight I want to be on the left side, I'm going to make the right side a little bit darker. So I'm going to take that dark green and just around the edge of each pea, on the right side toward the bottom, I'm going to put a little bit of this dark paint. And definitely in between where the peas meet. So I'm just, see I'm just putting a little bit of that dark green on the right side and in between the peas. 
a space in between them. There. I'm also going to take a tiny bit of that dark green and I'm going to put some right where the point is of the opening. See that? Turn it around and I'll do this side. So right where that point is in the opening, I'm making it a little darker. Okay. So I'm really happy with this. If you ever fit, you need a little bit more. You can always add a little bit of more dark. You can't necessarily make it lighter, but you can always add a little bit of darkness if you need to. So now I'm going to let this dry completely because we want to put a little glaze on our peas. Um, but first, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and actually paint the inside of the piece. So we're going to go back to that yellow green. I'm going to mix it up and put a little bit in an empty spot on our palette and add more, a little bit more water to it so it's nice and transparent. And then I'm going to take clear water and I'm going to paint clear water on the inside of my pea, the actual pea, the circle. Pick up some of that yellow green and then drop some of it into the pea. And then I'm going to swoop it down toward the right side. So I'm just giving it a little bit of color. So again, clear water, kind of avoiding that upper highlight area on the left side. Mopping up any extra water if I need to, just by drying my brush and putting that damp brush back into the pea, picking up the yellow green and then just dropping it in on the lower right side. And I'll just go up through the other ones. Clear water toward the right side, picking up the yellow green and just dropping a little bit in on that right side. Clear water wasn't that clear. <laughs> Yellow green and dropping it in on the right side. And then one more time, this little pea at the top, a little bit of clear water, a little bit of yellow green, dropping it in. So that gives our peas a little bit more color. Now we're going to let it dry, and then we'll be back to put a final glaze. All right, so it's time for our final step, and we're going to put a glaze on our peas. And we're going to start with the mimosa and get a nice little puddle of mimosa in, our, in one in part of our clean palette. And then pick up some of our leftover yellow green and add it in. So it's a really vibrant yellow green. And then add even more water so it's nice and fluid and transparent. Okay? And we're going to start on the pea pod on the left. And we're just going to go over the entire thing with this beautiful glowing yellow green. And what this does is it sort of unifies all the layers that we've put down and it gives it some vibrancy in life. We're just pulling it down all across, okay? And then we're gonna do the same on the other pea pod, but while we're doing it, so the upper left-hand corner is our highlight. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go around each of those highlights with our yellow green. So I'm going to turn my card and just know that it's going to be on the lower right. And I'm just going to put the yellow green wash in a circle around those highlights. I don't want to get any of that paint in the highlights. So I'm just surrounding them so the paint will stop. And then I can paint more freely and put the yellow-green wash down 
avoiding those highlights. So I'm just pulling it down, but just avoiding, going right up to where I painted that line around the highlight. And see, it just avoids going into that highlight. So I am painting some of the P, but I'm avoiding where I circled um, and circled the highlights. all the way to the end. I'm going to dry my brush off and just sort of wick up, just kind of go over it again, just sort of wicking up any extra paint. and just continuing to dry my brush and pick up any of that extra paint. I'm just making sure I have this nice smooth glaze. Perfect. So now you can see I have these shiny white highlights on my peas but the rest of it has this sort of glowing yellow green glaze. And that is all, that's all I need to do. And my peas are done. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you will try it. And try it more than once. As you know, the first time we learn and the second time we practice and the third time we can really get somewhere. Um, and we usually have better results the more we try something. So I always, I mean, I did this before to practice it. So, um, it's always a good idea to do a project more than one time and I hope you will uh, share it on social media and tag me in it so I can see it. You can always send it to my email too. It's kateri.ewing at gmail.com and I had one other announcement today and that is that I started my Patreon account. I will leave a link to it in the description box. Um, you could also search for me on Patreon um, under Kateri Ewing. And it's just beginning. I'm going to share my first um, post for patrons tomorrow. People are, are already signing up. I am so grateful for that. I am very, very excited about this new venture. And the main reason that I've started it is because I want to spend more time creating videos and teaching and um, sharing with you this lovely community um, the things that I've learned and that I'm still learning. And um, YouTube is wonderful, um, but it, it's not, I, I spend a lot of time doing it and I would like to spend even more. And I can't really do that without being compensated in some way financially. And that's, a, a, that's just a dilemma. <laughs> and I wish it wasn't the case, but it is. And so I like Patreon because it's a, a real energy exchange. So I, I give, in, in my lessons and videos and conversations and many things that you'll be able to read on there that will be part of this program. Um, and, and then I also receive. And so it's a really wonderful exchange of energy that way. And I'm very, very excited about it. I have lots of great ideas and fun plans ahead. And the YouTube channel will still be here and it is still the home for all of the Artists for Everyone videos. That will not change. And there will be other videos on YouTube. But the Patreon account affords me more time to do more in-depth tutorials on drawing lessons and techniques and tools and materials and longer watercolor projects over several videos. So, you know, if you, if you really want to dig deep and learn more, it's a great place to do that. So again, YouTube isn't going anywhere. I will still be uploading here regularly and it will always be the home of the Artists for Everyone videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you will visit me on Patreon and see what you think. Leave me comments there and let me know your thoughts or even here. And again, I'm really grateful that you've spent the time watching this video and I do hope you'll try it and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Have a great day wherever you are and it's time to eat peas. <laughs> I think I'm going to make some for dinner. Thank you so much. Have a great day.